live from the MGM Grand Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's The Q at Splunk.com 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Splunk. Here are your hosts, Jeff Kelly and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back. Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We are at the Splunk.com 2014 show at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. This is the fifth year of the Splunk show. It's the third year of having theCUBE. We love this show because we get a nonstop number of, of customers coming on, really talking about how they use Splunk, how it's changed their world, and uh, we're really excited about it. So for this next segment, I'm joined by my co-host. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, Jeff, great to be back, and back with you, the Jeff and, Jeff, right, the show, Jeff and Jeff show, as we started two years ago here at Splunk.com. Uh, so we're joined in this segment by Adam In. He's the IT manager with the Royal Flying Docker Service. Welcome, Adam. Thank you for having me. So let's just start with the most uh, obvious question. What is the Royal Flying Docker Service? Sure, so the Royal Flying Docker Service is a, an Australian organization. We're actually um, the largest provider of rural and remote healthcare in Australia. So we provide a number of health services, but probably what we're best known for is flying out to really remote and rural areas of Australia and providing uh, both emergency and also primary health care out there. So we'll you know, fly doctors and other medical health professionals out to provide you know, clinic services at places where there's no hospitals, no doctors or clinics. And we also will fly people back into cities where uh, they can get specialist care. Mm -hmm. Now is that, well first of all, it's a, it's a, it's a huge country and mm. A lot of that kind of rural area, for lack of a better term, I imagine. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a lot of need for the kind of service you're providing. Yeah, there sure is. It's uh, I think uh, Australia is like the third least populated um, country in the world. So there's a lot of uh, outback out there. <laughs> the outback. And, That's um, the word I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. Or the bush, you could call it. Uh, the bush. Yeah. But um, yeah, a lot of a lot of people out there doing important things, um, and uh, you know, it's. It's uh, great to work for an organization that, that goes out there and provides, you know, provides these critical health services where mm -hmm. nobody else does. So is the Royal Flying Doctor Service, is that a government organization or is that a private enterprise? It's not, it's an it's a independent non-profit. Mm -hmm. um, we do obviously um, get funding from the government, but we also heavily rely on uh, charitable donations. Mm -hmm. And Adam, how big is it? Just give us some metrics on yeah, number of people, sure. number of patients. Okay, you know, just yeah, give us some basic definitely. metrics. So we've got uh, over a thousand staff throughout Australia. Okay. Uh, we operate a fleet of, I believe it's 63 aircraft at the moment. 63. 63 aircraft, yeah. So we're actually uh, Australia's third largest airline behind okay. Qantas and Virgin. Okay. So if you, if you do it based on the number of aircraft that we have. Um, we've got, uh, we do about well, over 290,000 contacts with patients every year. So it's like a, the equivalent of you know, helping somebody every two minutes. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Splunk. So you're here at the Splunk.com uh, yeah. show. Um, so tell us about your use of Splunk. How, how, how did Splunk help you uh, kind of deliver your, on your mission? Yeah, sure. Look, we, um, we had some discussions with our, our, our local uh, partner, Secureware, in Adelaide um, about you know, how, uh, how Splunk could help us with a lot of our day-to-day you know, -day IT challenges. But we also um, pretty quickly realized that it could help us you know, with some pretty niche uh, things that uh, we kind of were struggling you know, with ideas of how we could put them together. So things like tracking our aircraft. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we had good streams of data, but um, you know, not great tools to just easily put together reports and dashboards about that. Mm -hmm. So we're using it to you know, track our aircraft. Um, and we've also started to use it to uh, even track some uh, little Wi-Fi enabled devices that uh, are monitoring the temperature in the fridges that we use to keep um, our important medicines like vaccines uh, at our bases and also in the insulated boxes that uh, we use to um, transport them on the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's interesting. So let's talk about the, the, the aircraft data. So is that mm -hmm. um, essentially data that's streaming out the aircraft from engines, from uh, any other number of sensors that could mm -hmm. be, mm -hmm. you know, there people are now putting onto aircrafts? Yeah, look, the, we're, we started off um, you know, pretty simply, really. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a subscription with um, a service called Flight Explorer, um, which is basically an aggregator uh, of data from uh, the equivalent of our air traffic controller, Air Services Australia. 
So they put together the, the feed of data coming from um, you know, ground radar and other sources. Mm -hmm. um, and then through their application, uh, we can get a real-time stream of where our aircraft are, what they're, you know, where they're going, their, um, you know, their altitude, and key stats like that. And it's actually really readily available without actually needing dedicated hardware in the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So because the application logs everything to a file, we can easily grab that with Splunk, index it, create reports, create dashboards, look at you know, our operations over time. Yeah, so to talk about what are some of those metrics that you're looking at? What are some of the important um, analytics that you're running on that data that, that you want to understand about uh, mm -hmm. how your aircraft are operating? Look, it's uh, just interesting to look at patterns of you know, where, where we've flown, but also to actually give us that real-time visibility. Um, we, you know, we've got um, you know, our dedicated operational staff that obviously have their finger on the pulse 24-7 knowing where our fleet are, but using Splunk, uh, we can actually easily uh, and readily uh, get the, this information about what we're doing, where, where our aircraft are, out to all of our staff. Mm -hmm. So we've used um, you know, some big screens mounted on walls around our bases, showing Splunk dashboards, you know, simple equivalents of like arrival and departure boards at an airport, but simple, but it makes a difference when there's a nurse at our base that you know, needs to know, you know, needs to be able to go and meet an incoming aircraft with a patient on board to know exactly when they're due in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's simple, but it does make a difference. And it helps, I imagine, kind of uh, optimize your use of the aircraft and uh, in terms of fleet management, that kind of thing? Yeah, look, we're certainly looking at how we can use Splunk that way. Mm -hmm. And then the other use case you mentioned, um, essentially sensors that are monitoring the, the weather, uh, sorry, the uh, temperature inside yeah. the fridges. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, another interesting, you might call industrial, use case? Yeah, uh, yeah. Tell, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. So tracking the, the temperature of vaccines is, is very, really important, mm -hmm. but also for, for other medicines as well. Um, as I said before, we, we store um, a lot of them in fridges at the, at the bases that we fly out from, um, and then we need to keep them within a certain temperature range during mm -hmm. flight. Mm -hmm. Historically, we've had, you know, pretty simple sensors there to do that, but not a whole lot of historical data and not proactive you know, email alerts or anything. If this starts to be a, you know, a problem where it looks like the, the fridge might be approaching a temperature that's going to be a problem for the contents. Mm -hmm. So we went out to market looking for some simple devices um, that could help us track the fridges and the boxes that we temporarily store um, the medicines in. We found um, some sensors made by Corentech, which is a company based in the UK. And um, they basically are configurable so that you can log the temperature and humidity, if you, if you like, at, a, uh, at whatever regularity you prefer. And then they will submit, that, uh, submit or send um, over your Wi-Fi network to their centralized um, software. The great thing about the software is that it logs everything to a file. So once again, Splunk can index that file, and we can actually create extra reports, do real-time alerts, um, you know, in a more powerful and customizable way, you know, exactly the way we want using Splunk. That's what I was going to ask. You just answer my question, which was, you know, what's the delta with what you can do with Splunk with that data versus what you could do natively with that data with the provider software? Yeah, look, it, you know, the, the software is great, but it's, you know, doesn't give you quite the same level of, you know granular control, whereas with Splunk, you know, you can say, okay, well, for this particular fridge or this particular box of drugs, you know, I want to just email this person and then, okay. you know, maybe CC somebody else rather than everybody getting every alert. Right, right. And how many fridges are connected to this? Uh, look, it's actually um, uh, just a couple uh, out of each of our bases, okay. but um, there's quite a number when you, quite a number of sensors when you add up all the boxes that we have, you know, one on every aircraft mm -hmm. too. So I wonder if you could talk about, you know, kind of exploring in the data. Mm -hmm. uh, we hear a lot about, you know, people being able to search and query and, you know, yeah, again, sure. kind of change information, you know, change data and information, information mm -hmm. yep. to action. Yep. Do you have any good stories that you can share where you guys were able to do some things that you couldn't do before? Yeah, of course. Look, um, one of the things that, um, that we were able to actually really readily able, uh, we were readily able to do with Splunk was you know, having brought in the flight tracking information from Flight Explorer, um, just for our own internal operational use, we were able to um, help our marketing team 
to um, provide a new service to people that are giving charitable donations. So we, we set up a, a new fundraising program, uh, bythesky.com.au, where the idea is that if you make a $50 donation, um, to recognise that, we'll effectively um, give you a patch of sky, and in that patch of sky, we'll tell you every time we fly through it. So that's some real-time information, and we're able to generate all the uh, information and reports that we needed for that out of Splunk. And how is that received? Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really quite good. It's, you know, it's quite a, um, it's a new thing for us to, uh -huh. to um, be able to you know, use social media um, to, to try and engage with donors. And I don't think people realise just how much the Royal Flying Doctor Service does on a, you know, every day of the year. So um, it's, you know, it's a, I think it's a, you know, a, a pretty neat way to use that data that we had operationally to actually you know, tell, tell our donors, you know, thanks for your donation, this is how we're putting it to work. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Adam, so one thing we hear from a lot of customers here at the, at the conference is that they started with Splunk in one particular area, often mm -hmm. it's IT operations, and then they yep. moved to other areas of the company. Yeah. And certainly that's part of Splunk's strategy, that kind yeah. of and expand, and yeah. they, you know, they, they do get a significant amount of upsell that comes from more horizontal expansion. Of course. I wonder, was that the case in your organization? How did you kind of get, you mentioned how you got started, but how did it kind of expand, and, and what did that look like on the ground? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, with, with our local partner, it was, um, it was actually a pretty relatively straight, uh, straightforward process. We were able to um, set up a trial, which was great. You know, try before you buy, get to know the product, fantastic. Uh, and then, you know, just to be able to just see how quickly we could actually get get some meaningful reports out um, was really great. So, you know, we started off pulling in the you know, the, the flight operational data. Obviously, we were doing the you know the, some of the IT things where. You know, logging the, well, we're indexing the logs from our mail security appliance, you know, from our network devices, um, you know, and great to be able to, to you know, do reports and alerting for that. And then, just I guess organically, we just started doing some of the other things that I talked about when we realized sort of how easy it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So was it kind of word of mouth inside the organization that kind of, uh, I mean, we, we kind of joke about it uh, here, but I mean, sometimes it's literally the case that somebody kind of looking behind, around the wall and saying, what, what is it you guys are doing over there with Splunk? Yeah, look, um, the, the IT team that I'm a part of is actually a very small one, so um, we're sort of just, you know, trying to actually promote, promote the use of it. Plus, you know, it's more that you know, the organization has come to us, you know, looking for help with it or, you know, looking for a solution to a problem or, you know, to fulfill a need. And, you know, because Splunk is so flexible, we've found that we can, we can do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so you also mentioned kind of that try before you buy model, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an interesting uh, development in kind of the, the enterprise software space. Not yeah. not just big data and Splunk, but yeah. just kind of enterprise software mm -hmm. uh, wide. Um, talk a little bit about your view on that. I mean, the old model was, or still is, in a lot of large enterprise software vendors. You know, a, a large um, POC, and then you, you plunk down a lot of money for yeah. a perpetual license up front, yeah. and then a deployment, and hopefully you get some value out of mm -hmm. that six, eight months, to yeah. a yeah. year later, yeah. versus the, I want to try something, in some cases for free, a, a yeah. sandbox approach like yeah. Splunk offers, yeah. or maybe I want to, even then, when I do want to buy, I want to start small, mm -hmm. and then expand over time. Mm -hmm. Maybe with, even with a subscription license. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about your, your thoughts on that transition, and, and how do you view you know the, the two different models, and what's your what's your preference? Yeah, sure. Look, um, definitely my preference was to do a trial and make sure we could realize value before you know we put any money down. We're 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 a nonprofit. Uh, you know, we've got to make sure that we're maximizing you know every dollar that our our donors are giving us, you know, and we've definitely got a responsibility for that. So I found you know I found you know it was it was great to be able to you know spin up a VM, get some uh, help from Secureware to install configure, do some you know, example indexing of data and reports, you know, all without any outlay, um, you know, was great to then convince me that yes, this is definitely going to provide value to our organization. Okay, Adam, so we're running out of time here. I'm going to sure. give you the last word. The Splunk execs are watching. What do you need from them to help you do your job better? Uh, you're going to be talking about uh, at dot .conf 2015. Yeah. Okay, well look, um, I've really enjoyed um, you know, working with and creating dashboards and reports with their with the new native maps feature. Um, 
we're, with tracking our aircraft locations, I would love it if we could easily customize the icons. So rather than little pie charts with different colors, you know, if we could, if we could easily customize the icons so it could have an aircraft That's icon. Right, little airplane icons, yeah. I want a little airplane icon. Yeah, okay, well that, that shouldn't be that complicated. <laughs> so customize icons. Uh, Adam in from the Royal Flying Doctor Service of Australia. That's Thanks it. for stopping by theCUBE. You had a Thanks. long flight here. Hopefully you didn't take it in a small plane. <laughs> uh, so I'm Jeff Rick here with Jeff Kelly. We are at Splunk.conf 2014, the fifth uh, annual Splunk User Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks for watching.